You love in question. So you would not have won anyway, so might as well answer. All right, before we go start going over problems, we need to go over all the theorems. Now, did we do, we went over the limit comparison test, right? Sure. Now, did we do the integral test? We did the integral test, too, right? No. Okay, turn to page 517. You're lucky. It looks like the, you know when I learned this, we had to use we have to learn the root test too. But it looks like the root test is only in the problem. So you know what? You're not going to be responsible for the root test. Yeah. Are you on page five seventeen? I'm going to call on somebody to read it out loud. That means you got to be looking at theorem ten. Theorem ten, the integral test. Okay, read it. Nah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I'm interested in hearing this. <laughs> Try and read it. Let. AON. <laughs> well, you can't even. A sub n. Uh, be a sequence of positive terms. Suppose that A sub n equals f of n, where f is a continuous positive decreasing function of x for all x greater than or equal to n. n is a positive integer. Then the series. <laughs> of a sub n and, and the integral of f of x, either both converge or both converge. <laughs> you guys don't understand that? No. Okay, here. Okay. There's an example in the book, but let's just do this. I need, is there such thing as glasses where, you, like, you can flip yeah. Bifocals. Well, you can flip it. Yeah, the one you flip, you know. Oh, the sunglasses. No, not sunglasses. Oh, sun <laughs> oh yeah, there is. It's like half. Yeah, yeah half yeah. is half. Yeah. Yeah. Half is. Oh yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can do that. Well, it's so okay. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. Okay. Okay, now this one you're supposed to just know already, right? It converges. Why? Yeah. Yeah. P it's a P series with P is greater than one. So it in fact, you're supposed to know what it converges to, I told you, right? Wait, you're on I squared over six. See, yeah, see, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. High squared over six. Okay, but let's use the integral test. Now, this is what the integral test says. If I do an integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx, Like to figure out this, we know how to compute this. Right? What is this called? Integral. This is called an improper integral. So, yeah. what we're gonna do, so either they both converge or both diverge. So if you, if you can figure out if this converges, then that converges. If this one diverges, that one diverges. This is this is the integral test. So, change this to a letter, and then we take the limit as b approaches infinity. I think you guys know how this comes out, right? Compute that. Find the an what's the antiderivative of this? And don't say ln like AB students. Lin. <laughs> One third is two. And then next word. One, one third. No, antiderivative. <laughs> I like how all the kids say word. Okay, I'll give you a hint. This is the same thing as x to the negative, negative one. Two. You make the power one bigger. Oh. <laughs> when Michael, <laughs> then you put the reciprocal in the front for P. Oh say. <laughs> Even AB, AB doesn't make that. No, they do. <laughs> okay, then you get it. Plug in the top number, plug in the bottom number, subtract. Now, let's take the limit as b approaches infinity. What happens to this? Zero. That goes to zero, therefore the whole thing goes to? So it converges to one. So since this one converges, that one converges. Either they both converge or they both diverge. Okay, let's do another one. Here's another example. Oh, let's just do, let's do this series. This is the harmonic series. You guys should know this already. Converge or diverge? Diverge. diverge. Diverges. Why? P series. P series where P is one. 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 Yeah, so it diverges. Anyway, or you could just say harmonic series because everybody knows the harmonic series. Okay, but let's prove this using the integral test. Did you just assume? So one to infinity, one over x dx. What makes this integral improper? Infinity. The infinity. So put the b there and then take the limit as b approaches infinity. Compute this integral like you normally do. Antiderivative. When? When? What? Stop. <laughs> what? When did people start calling it? <laughs> Ever since your friend Steve Boyce. I started hearing it earlier this year in AB and now it's spread to It's because of Mr. Boris. <laughs> what? He calls it Lynn. Yeah. He says Lynn. Lynn too. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> take the lid and everyone's like, what the hell is a lid? <laughs> 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 I'm 
Lynn. 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 Well, as long as you understand, because now, you know, because of the app, the trigonometry value, trig values app. I don't know angles. Angles. Yeah, know your angles. You know what students do for ND right now? They just write U. In PCH, there was a plethora of U's on the speed quiz. I didn't know what that means. But apparently on the app, no, apparently on the app, you stood for undefined. On the yeah, yeah, angles exactly. People actually use that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, come on. Hey, wait, 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 miss, she's here, she's here. Where's the absolute value? Where did the absolute value go? Tomorrow. It's from one to infinity. Yeah, so how come I don't put absolute value? Iron negative. Yeah, because x is positive, right? Because it's going from one, it's only positive numbers. Uh, if you put it okay, so plug in the top number, plug in the bottom number, subtract. Natural log one is zero, right? Infinity. AB, we still got, we got to train them on natural log one is zero. Now we take the limit as B approaches infinity. What happens with this? Infinity. It diverges to infinity, right? And beyond. So if this diverges, that diverges. That's the integral test. They either both converge or both diverge. Now do you understand the integral test? I thought there was another one. I, I got a really good one on the practice test, and I even got a better one on the real test. Oh. I, I, think ah. I think they did put the real oh. test as a practice. I'll let you get to this practice test is harder than the real test. <laughs> okay, we did the limit. Does everybody understand the limit comparison test? So actually, no. you can actually What's the use the limit comparison test in place of the regular comparison test. Wait, there's multiple calls. <laughs> okay, I think we're, we're going to tie up all the loose ends right now. How many tests do we have? Okay. Oh, by the way, if, when we're done with all of these tests, I don't know if you guys read the book, so the answer is no. But, you know the book, if you re actually read it, look right here. On page 526, there's like a flow chart to determine convergence. There's like a flow chart there. Oh, oh okay. This is wow. the first thing Whoa, whoa. If you read the book, you can actually learn something. Is it German? It's a book. Well, what's a book? What's the one? And equal one to infinity. Okay, shh. When you send the email, say go. Before school practice. One over N Q. One. No. N over N Q plus one. One over n squared. Converge or diverge. Now you can converge. I told you that converge. 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 I told you guys what to look for. Right there. Just look at that. Look at the leading converge. curve. It's not there. one. Piece That's like one over n squared. Over one over n squared. <laughs> okay, so it converges, but then on the AP exam you have to give a reason. When compared to one now, if you're gonna use the regular comparison test, you have to show that the terms of this series are less than or equal to the terms of this series. Well done. Can you, can you make that claim? Yes. Yes, because when you add one to the denominator, it makes it smaller. So you can just use the regular comparison test here. Mm. Okay, but what if I did this? What if I meant minus one? That wouldn't be good because you can't have undefined, so I just change n to two. What if I did that? Can you say that this is always going to be less than or equal to that? No. Yeah. No, because when you make the denominator smaller, it's actually bigger. So you cannot use the regular comparison test. So you would use the limit comparison test. You guys remember what that is? That's this one. That's this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, it's, yes. Okay, so what is that? What is a n plus one? You plug in n plus one. n over n cubed minus one, no. You gotta substitute n plus one for n full. No, but not every n plus one, one cubed cube minus one. And then you divide that by a sub n, which is n over n cubed minus one. But then when you divide by a fraction, I'm trying to concentrate it. Are you guys trying to make me make a mistake? Is that it? Yeah. No. Oh, we're hurting for God about that. Yeah, there. And then if you take the limit as n approaches infinity, what do you get? If the degree of the top and the bottom are the same, you look at the coefficients. One. One. Which is a number between zero and infinity, like it says in the book. So therefore, if this comes out to a finite positive number, what? They either both converge or both diverge. So since the series we're comparing it with is this, right? We already know this one converges, so therefore that one has to converge. This is called the limit comparison test. 
Yoshida. Could you also just compare it to like 1 over um, n to the 3 half? Because if you look like for large values, it's larger than n. Mm -hmm. And it'll apply. And we're only looking at large values. <sighs> I thought if it goes to Wait, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. N to the 3. Wait. So if you compare 1 over n squared with 1 over n to the 3 halves. I guess so. I guess that would work. But why? I don't know. Just to be different. No, if you just want to be lazy. Well, what could be lazier than this? <laughs> Nothing is lazier than that. Olga. Isn't that the ratio test that the limit is one inconclusive? Yes. No, we're doing the limit comparison oh, test. Isn't that it's the, the limit of yeah, but one function or one other tests? one? And you know what the limit of. Oh, you're talking about. Okay. Alright, this is getting. This is the ratio test. I thought we are doing here. Oh, yeah, wait. Is this a ratio test? When did we learn the, the ratio test? Where is it? 10 4. Okay, 10 4. The ratio test. Okay, I missed two. It's the one that's L. We don't have L in here. Oh my here. god, I missed two. Oh, yeah. No, that's just the ratio <laughs> test. Oh my god. The one you did is the ratio test, and if it's one, it's inconclusive. Oh! Olga! <laughs> okay, then what's the limit comparison test? Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> mistake! Oh, that's a that's a mistake! Oh, mistake! Oh, that's a mistake. <laughs> Page 519. There! Right there! No, but it's not like AM plus 1. Oh! Oh! Yes! 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 Okay, everybody gets one bonus point on the next test. Even Kevin Black is scoring. You're right, this is so rich. Okay, start all over. We just Yeah. I was thinking it in my head. Remember, didn't I, didn't I do this? Yeah. So what did I do after that then? I didn't use it. Oh my goodness, that's sad. Okay. So what we want to do, yeah, if I make a mistake, everybody, and if you taunt, I take away. From the taunt arrow. No taunting. <laughs> Look, I would like to have tests. <laughs> so we're going to do the limit comparison test with this. So what does the limit comparison test say? <laughs> no. Yes. It's the no. limit of the Okay, and now we take true. the ratio of this one over that one. And then you take the limit as n approaches infinity. Oh, so if this comes out to a finite positive number, then they either both converge or both diverge. So. When you divide by a fraction, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. What's that limit? One. It's one. The ratio test. Yeah, there you go. So they they either both converge or both diverge. But we already know this one converges, so now that converges. But you don't. This is called the limit comparison test. Yes. What was that? But yeah. you don't know it. Is this a ratio test? That's why you want to compare it with something that you know. This is the ratio test. Like, yes. I'm telling you right now, the main one that you should know is the P series. The P series is the key the to every side. Right. That's what you're comparing it with. P series. <coughs> okay, next. Okay, turn to page 521. This is what we learned in PCH last year. Read theorem 12. What if it's not a final number? Then you do Oh, did you read the thing? No. If it's zero, then it converges. Zero of twelve. Infinity, then it diverges. No. Oh. No. It says, okay, turn back to page 519. It says, if this limit comes out to zero, if this series converges, then that one converges. But if it comes out to infinity, if this one diverges, then that one diverges as well. And what happens if it comes out to infinity and it then you can't make any conclusions. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look, read the whole limit comparison test. We just did number one, but then there's, no, there's a number two and number three. All the way to Okay, so, okay, what if you did, let's just say, what if you did this limit? What if it came out to zero? What does it say then? If this converges, then that converges. If it came out to zero. But it didn't. It came out to one. 
So it doesn't even apply. Okay, so it doesn't even apply in our problem. Now, what if you took the limit and it came out to infinity? I'm missing our problem. <laughs> if it did, then if this one diverges, that one diverges as well. But that's not what happened. It came out to one, which is a positive finite number. Therefore, they either both converge or both diverge. That's the limit comparison test. Okay, now we need to do the... Re okay, somebody said they remembered this from last year. Turn to page 521. Who's going to read it aloud? No, Trent already went. Ishiara. Read theorem 12 aloud. Um, the series... <laughs> how, how, okay, how sigma, that? Sigma, sigma n equal 1 to infinity. n equal 1 to infinity. Okay. Negative 1 to the n plus Negative 1. Negative 1 to the n plus 1. <laughs> Do you want me to just read it? Right? <laughs> u sub n, u sub n equals u sub 1. <laughs> stop, stop talking already. <laughs> okay, so you have an alternating series. So this theorem only applies to alternating series. Okay? It will, this series will converge if all three of the following conditions are satisfied. Number one, each u sub n is positive. Which means it's going to go positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, negative, positive, right? Oh yeah, so number two, number two, u sub n is always greater than or equal to u sub n plus one for all n greater than or equal to n for some integer n. Okay, so what does that mean? Each term is going to be greater than or equal to the next term. But it doesn't have to be for the entire series. It has to be just at some point. And then finally, number three, the limit as n approaches infinity of u sub n has to be zero. Okay, so here. What if I give you this series? You're uh, the video. The, the silence? What? You're not in the video. Oh yeah. I just said that. How did you guys how can you guys remember? Mistake. <laughs> oh mistake. That's not a mistake. <laughs> not a mistake. <laughs> hey, when you claim look, I, I will admit my mistake. But okay. if you try to claim a mistake when it's not a mistake, it doesn't take that away. But then I'll like you and I will live. That's not a mistake. That's not a math mistake. That's an age mistake. <laughs> Okay, now I forgot to say that you made. Okay, we're doing the alternating name. One minus half plus one third minus one fourth plus dot dot dot. No, this one you're supposed to just know already, right? 0.693. No, it's not well, two. It's approximately 0.693. Oh, no, you would get. 0.693 is approximately natural log 2. It's like three decimal places. That's like just. It's like saying pi is 3.14. I'm pretty sure. Well, Most no, cases it's not. They use no. It's approximately 3.14. Anyway, so we know this converges. Okay, but what if they ask you why? Um, it's actually 22. Okay, this is an yeah, alternating series theorem. Okay, now, how does how do we know that it applies? Now, if you take all of the terms like this, one, one half, one third. See, without without the alternating thing, are all the things positive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the second condition? Each term has to be greater than or equal to the previous one. Yeah. Yes. And then the third one is the limit zero. Is it getting closer and closer to zero? Yeah. Yes. So now we can say this converges by the alternating series to the theorem. And then they're going to ask you what does it converge to? Then you say natural log two. Question. You don't have to show. I thought I saw I saw movement here. No, no movement. <laughs> Was that another one? <laughs> That's not a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to the next page, I theorem 13. Is that, is that another uh, alternating? This is also new, known as Leibniz's theorem now. That's what I put on my court chart. I have a question. Yeah. So for that question, if you just pair the third and the half, it would be constantly decreasing. So it goes from one and then it, it's always decreasing. Yeah, but you just look at the use of ends, not the positives and negatives. So you don't you don't just you just disregard the signs. Think of it as a sequence, yeah, with all positive terms. As long as this is always greater than or equal to the next term and it goes to zero, then that series will converge. Oh, okay. that's that's what it is. I don't even okay. understand. Okay, turn to page five twenty two at the top of the page, theorem thirteen. This is what we did last year: the alternating series estimation theorem. If the alternating series satisfies the condition of theorem twelve, 
then the truncation error for the nth partial sum is less than u sub n plus 1 and has the same sign as the first unused term. What the heck does that mean? So let's say we have a series that satisfies the condition of Leibniz's theorem or the alternating series theorem. What if I said use the first four terms to approximate the value? Okay, so you add up these numbers, and that will be an approximation of the series, right? Natural log 2. But how close are you to the actual answer? The first term that you didn't use. What's the first term that I didn't use here? One fifth. So you will be within one fifth of the actual answer. Is that what I? So whatever the first term you didn't use, you're going to be within one term, uh, one fifth, well, whatever this term is of the actual answer. So your magnitude of error will be within one fifth. You will be within one fifth of the actual answer if you just add the first four terms. What if it's negative? Like what if you include okay, the so, the, so the question is, okay, if they ask you for the magnitude of error, then you always just give a positive number. But what did they say about the sign? It says over here, it has the same sign as the first unused term. So since this one is positive, then what does that mean? Okay, let me show you a picture. Let's, let's do common sense here. Here's 0 and 1. I'm pretty sure I showed you this picture before. Let's plot the partial sums. What's the sum of the first term? 1. one. one. Then you have to subtract a, a half from that. So if I subtract the half, you can be over here, right? Yeah. That's the second partial sum. What's the third partial sum? Natural log then you have to, no, you have to <laughs> add three, one third. So if I add one third to that, you're here. Then you've got to subtract the form. Okay, so the actual value is somewhere over here. Would you agree? Natural log, everybody agree? Yeah. So let's go start over. One. Subtract the half, add a third, subtract the four. Somebody tell me, why are you going to be within one fifth of the actual answer? Because you subtract. Because when you add one fifth to that, you can be over here. You're going to be on the other side of it. So this is your error. This is the error. So obviously you're within that, right? This is the actual error. That's why you're within one fifth of the actual answer. Because the next one is going to go past the actual number. It alternates back and forth. So, first term, second, third, fourth, fifth. And the sixth one is going to be here. So it's going to keep going back and forth. That's why you're always going to be within the next term, the first term that you didn't use. Do you guys understand that picture? Okay, let's do a more complicated one. I don't think we can do One minus one third plus one fifth minus one seventh plus dot dot dot. Does this series converge or diverge? Yes. Can I use the alternating yes. series theorem? <laughs> can I use the alternating yeah, yeah. series? Yes, you can. Okay, so does it apply? All three things apply? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Each term, so if you think of this as a sequence, one, one third, one fifth, all the positive ones like that, is each term greater than or equal to the next one? Yeah. Is it going to zero? Yeah. Yes, this thing converges. So you would say it converges by the alternating series theorem. In fact, we already know what it converges to because this is a power series. I think somebody, I think Hahnemann got this last time. Oh, it's uh, tan. Yeah, that's the power series for tan inverse x. What do I plug in for x? One. Yeah, so, that, so what, what is it? It's pi over 4. Okay, so it converges to pi over 4. But, but even if you didn't know that, you know it's going to converge by the alternating series theorem. So what if I said, what if I were to use the first 10 terms? What is the magnitude of error if I use the first term? Okay, that's a term. Okay, what would the term be? Uh, one over seven. So you know what you might want to do? You might want to use right sigma notation for this. One, three, five, okay, so positive. So one over. How do you generate the numbers? One, three, five, seven. Two n minus one. So what is the eleventh term going to be? Huh? 21. 21. Yeah, 21. 21. 21. There you go. So if you add, if you add the first 10 terms, you will be within that of the actual answer, which is the 11th term. Yes. That's the alternating series theorem and the remainder. I mean, not the remainder, but the estimating theorem. Okay. Is the last test? 
interpret the no, no more theorems? Okay, you guys might read, you guys might, you might, you might want to look at this, uh, uh, what do you call this thing again? Chart. A full chart. chart. That, that's not an error. I didn't say anything. Okay, now we can go over problems. What? Somebody erased that. That's not a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a math mistake. It had numbers involved. <laughs> okay, can somebody tell me what numbers were up there? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, there were a lot of That's problems. not a number. No, there were a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, well, tell me. Why don't we do one for each section oh, then? Yeah. Okay, what was the first number that was assigned? One. One was integral Use the test integral test. test. Come on. But we didn't learn it. Okay, I'll do number one for you. Did I assign number two? No. You assigned five. Okay, it says use the it now. I'm going to tell you right now on my test. I don't tell you which test to use. You got to figure out what test I want. So, well, just ask yourself. Can I integrate that? Well, anyway, this one you already know. It's a p series, right? Okay, what is p in this problem? One third. It's one third, which is less than one, which is less than or equal to one. So therefore, it diverges. This thing does not get to zero fast enough for this series to diverge. But they don't want you to use that. They want you to use the integral test. So you do an integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the cube root of x dx. That's what you do. Improper. Change that to a b. Take the limit as b approaches infinity. Compute this integral like you normally do. Antiderivative. Angelo. Natural log. <laughs> no. Stop sounding like Tran. What? Uh. <laughs> she has her soul. <laughs> Yes. Go follow her. <laughs> oh, I thought there was somebody coming in. Uh, Stop stalling, Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she could just do it. Two thirds, and then three asks. Okay. From one to b, factor out the constant. So you Wait. What? That's wrong. Is there nothing there? That's right. That's right. Yes. Wait, where's the egg? Where's the the x is right there. I think it's yeah. negative. Oh. What? No. This is this is like x to the negative one third. You make the power one bigger, <laughs> and you put the reciprocal. Why is that swap? Oh my God! <laughs> <That's laughs> <a derivative>. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, what would happen if you take the limit as b approaches infinity? What happens to that? That goes to infinity. So this thing diverges to infinity. So. Either they both converge or both diverge. diverge. This one diverge, so they now some more diverges as well. But in real life, you would just say p, it diverges because p series p is less than or equal to 1. Yeah? In real life. Okay. Okay, what's the next problem on my side? Five. Okay. You, the, they tell you to use the limit comparison test. <laughs> we went over it last time. <laughs> okay, that's okay with it. Okay. When you use the limit comparison test, the key is you got to know what to compare it to. Look, just look at the leading terms right there. What are we going to com compare it to? 3 over n. No, yeah. 1 over n. <laughs> okay, you can do the 3, but 3 is a constant. You can throw it on the side like an unwanted test. Just, just compare it to 1 over n. If you wanted the 3 over n, that works as well. Do you guys understand that? Yes. Because three over if, oh let's just do 1 over n. Okay, what do we know about this series here? It diverges to infinity because it's the harmonic series. P is equal to 1, right? Yeah. So, we're going to take the limit of this over that. So, 3n minus 1 over n squared plus 1. And when you divide by this, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. And what do we get? 3. You get 3. Is that a positive finite number? Yeah. Yeah, so either they both converge or both diverge. That one diverges, so therefore that one has to diverge. Huh? See, limit comparison test, that's like the easiest of all, because just look at the leading terms, man. That's what you compare it with. Now, what would happen if you did put the 3 here? How, how is that going to change? It just be 1. Yeah, then you would have this, and then you get 1. Yes. That's still a positive finite number, so either they both converge or both diverge, right? Yep. Yep. And since that one diverges, that one diverges as well. Box that. Huh? Yeah. Look, this is the harmonic series. It diverges to infinity. What happens when you multiply it by 3? It's bigger. No, it's not a bigger infinity. Stop saying that. It also <laughs> diverges to infinity. 
We don't know if it's a bigger infinity. Flat land. Oh, <laughs> okay, what is the next number? What is the next number I'm saying? Seven. Why? Seven through 31 odd. Okay, this is the meat of the test right here. You're going you're gonna to get a whole page of series. you got to tell me convergent Okay, do we really have to do all of them? Okay, let's just do it. We, we have all day. I actually planned a game for you. No, let's put it. No, I was coming, driving to school. It's a group B. Yeah, we need to do it. Okay. I was driving to school and I said, hey, that would be a really good game. What was the game? Uh, I can't tell you because you're going to start studying. Instead of I don't even study what I'm actually supposed to. Why would I study the game? Okay, now, you guys by now should have a. I hate these glasses. I think the last time you were like, I love these glasses. You guys should make me a little about this. Converge or diverge? Yes. Diverge. Diverge. Hey, series. Look. Okay, so what, I'm, what am I going to compare it with? One over n. Yeah, just one over n. That's the harmonic and that series. Thing is P no, equals no. one. Okay. So what what do you think? Regular comparison test? Limit yeah. comparison test? Limit. Limit. Ratio test? Limit. 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 Limit comparison. Okay. I'm telling you right now. That's like that, that's the easiest one. Limit comparison. So take take <laughs> this one divided by that, which is like multiplying by the reciprocal, and then you take the limit as n approaches infinity. So What's the limit? Five. Five, hey, that's a positive finite number. So they either both converge or both diverge. This one we know diverges, therefore that one has to diverge. So your answer would be it diverges by the limit comparison test. That's what you're going to have to say on the test. So you need to know the names of these Yes, you have to know the names. Well, what are you going to put instead? Numbers. Because math. One through thirteen. Because math works. Okay, I'm telling you on an AP exam. You know, okay, yes, you're going to get one point for diverge, and then the other point is by mentioning the limit comparison test. Just like by mentioning the intermediate value theorem, you know, the mean value theorem, the extreme value theorem. There's extreme value theorem? Okay, here. It diverges because Figure out the limit and put all the theorems. <laughs> Comparison. <laughs> put it in the legend. No. Okay, we'll make a legend. Uh, uh, LCT. Okay, if you're going to use the regular comparison test, can you say that 5 over n plus 1 is always less than or equal to 5 over n? Yeah, yeah, it's in the liquid. No, you can't yeah, use so the regular so because five is more than one. This you just have to put that, right? You just have to write that. Let me it diverges because of the, of the comparison. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I'm just telling you, it's just easier to limit comparison. If the, okay, if the regular comparison test is going to work, the limit comparison test is going to work. Just do it, just do this one all the time. It's, that's a godsend right there. Yoshida. I think it's pretty cool because if you take the five out of the numerator, it's whether it's converging or whether it doesn't matter, so you just ignore it. Yeah, because yeah, the constant can be thrown outside. And then when you plug in numbers, you see that the um, 1 over n is greater than the numerator, and that diverges no matter how many finding numbers you take away from the interest of them. Yeah. Every class is yeah. just part of it. Yeah. But you, you got to remember, when you're taking the AP exam, they want you to refer to the theorem of the definition. So, this is a theorem. OK, let's do the next one. Oh, number nine is a good one. Oh, oh. This is a preview. This is a preview of the test. Remember I told you I had a good problem? Number nine. Except it's better than this one. I thought it was number nine. Dude, you're being so close. Sigma, n over 21 to infinity, natural log n over n. OK, now you guys must have a feeling about this. Yes. Actually, this is pretty obvious. Stop saying yes. The n is kind of So the n is the answer. I don't want to hear this. And what's left after you cancel? Lin. 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 Oh yeah. Okay. What, what? Okay. So, what's your initial feeling? Converge or diverge? Yeah. Diverge. And to the Diverge. Okay. Now, there's lots of ways to do it. Think about it. If you were to do a direct comparison test, what would you compare it with? 
1 over n. Now, can you say this one diverges to infinity, right? So if I'm going to prove that this one also diverges to infinity, you have to show that the terms of this series are greater than or equal to these terms. So can I say this is always greater than or equal to 1 over n? Now, it doesn't have to be for all values of n. Like, for example, when n is 1, that's not true, right? It has to be, it doesn't have to be for all values of n, but there has to be some point, because you have, a series has an infinite number of terms. At some point, will the terms of this series be greater than or equal to the terms of this series? It doesn't have to be right at the beginning. And that's why in the book, it says for some n, where n is greater than or equal to n, right? Remember that? That just means at some point, at some point, the terms of this series will be greater than or equal to that. Now, can you say that? Yes. In fact, starting with the second term, right? Starting with the second term, is it natural log 2? No, that's wrong. Starting with the third term, oh, that's a mistake. <laughs> See, I caught it. Starting with the third term, is it natural log n bigger than 1? Yeah, See, so you guys aren't even listening. You guys are like, hey, you just got another bullet. <laughs> How about listen? When you plug in 3 here, is it natural log 3 bigger than 1? Yeah. And then 4, 5, 6. So at some point, the terms of this series are bigger than that. So by the regular comparison test, or the book calls it the direct comparison test, this one diverges also. Wait, if it's bigger than Because think about it. If this series diverges to infinity, and you can say that this series is bigger than that, what's bigger than an infinite sum? sum. Another infinite, infinite sum. That's right. Uh, <laughs> it has to be bigger. Some infinities are bigger. OK, now, is that the only test we could have used here? Could I have used the limit comparison yes. test? Yes. Or let's try. Let's try. What about the limit comparison <laughs> test? So you take this one and you divide it by that, which is like multiplying by the reciprocal, and then you take the limit as n approaches infinity. These cancel out. What's the limit as n approaches infinity? infinity. It's infinity. So it diverges. It diverges. Because remember, if the limit is infinity, if this one diverges, that one diverges. If the limit is infinity. So yes, the, uh, uh, the limit comparison test will work also. Now, is there another way you could have done it? I heard Trad say it. The integral test. Let's try that. OK, so we're going to do an integral of natural log x over x dx. OK? How do you do this integral? Transit, u substitution. u equal ln x, du equal 1 over x dx. So this integral becomes u du. And what are my new limits of integration? Remember the limits change? Zero. Zero. Was zero? Infinity. Oh, so it's an improper integral, right? So what? Oh, you got to do it. Put a b there. Take the limit as p approaches infinity. So no, 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 we're not there yet. So what is that? One half u squared from 0 to b. And since we put the equal sign there, now we have to write the limit as b approaches infinity. That's why in the fourth quarter, they're changing not to write equal signs. I just put the arrow. So you got the limit as b approaches infinity of, plug in the top thing, 1 half, One half b, squared. b squared minus 0. So what happens as b approaches infinity of that? Infinity. That goes to infinity. So? Divergence. They both converge or both diverge. So since this one diverges to infinity, that one diverges to infinity. So you could have used three different tests on that one. Yeah? You know the direct comparison? If yeah. like the one you're comparing it against is, you know it diverges. So you, you got to look to see if the It's bigger. It's big. So why is that one less than? Oh. Haha. <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, that's another mistake. Whoa, three to <laughs> I know you guys are celebrating, but here, this is what I did. Just make the test hard. Ah! Uh, <laughs> you, you already made the test. Uh, no, you're right, I already made it. <laughs> yeah, this is, this, is, this is really bad here. If, you, if this one diverges, you have to show that the terms of this series are greater than or equal to that one. 
Right? They can't. Right? No. no. That's why. That's why no, I keep telling you. Like, just do the limit comparison test and you don't have to worry about it. Oh, yeah. You can't even show that it's Wait. Good. Yeah, you can. So then you're gonna have to use the limit comparison test. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Wait, wait. Maybe I should only give the point to tomorrow. No. Yeah. Okay. Why are you confused? Yeah, because okay, if you have something that diverges to infinity, and you can show that another series is bigger than that, what's bigger than an infinite sum? Another, another infinite sum. But if you prove that a Another series is less than this one. What is less than an infinite sum? Well, it could be another infinite sum, or it could be a finite number. You don't know. So that's why, if you have something that diverges to infinity, you have to show that the terms of the series of this one are bigger than that. Because what's bigger than an infinite sum? Another infinite sum. You understand? So what's smaller than an infinite sum? It could be another infinite sum, or it could be a finite number. You don't know. The original thing you taught us is wrong. No, that is wrong. This is wrong. This is the correct right there. But this one, no, you cannot do that. Yeah. You just remove the five and one. Say that again. So just one instead of five for the right hand side. I don't. I don't think so. That wouldn't work. No one. No one. Just a certain base. Five and three. Just <laughs> yeah, that's why. No, why in Look at the thinking. Okay. Just do limit comparison test. It works. Okay, we gotta move on. Okay, you know what? We just we're just gonna do it all. Say eleven as much as we can. Oh, try. 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 Number eleven. Sigma. No, this takes time to digest. You know. Okay, let me call on somebody. This one's easy. Lamachani, converge or diverge? Yes. yes. <laughs> diverge. No, no, no. Uh, okay, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a hint. It's a geometric series. Diverge. Okay, it diverges. Once you read it, reason. It's because it is a limit compared. No, I just told you it's geometric. <laughs> what, what's the common ratio for this? What's the common ratio? One, one, one over natural log two. two. Is that between negative one and one? Yeah. Remember, the only time a geometric series converges is if the, the absolute value of r is less than one. Is that between negative one and one? No. No, this is bigger than one. That's why it diverges. Well, because ln2 Because natural log two is, two is, smaller, two is smaller, smaller than one. When you divide by a fraction, it gets bigger. Wow. Here, for those of you, this is 0.693. I thought you can't oh, Approximate. <laughs> well, that's another question. Okay, number 13, we're just going to keep going. Ooh, I like this one. Oh! Uh, man! I see. I wish, I just now wish I put this on the test. Oh, Don't worry, I will. This is a lot of too much fire. I see some. Converge or diverge? Let me call on people. You're. Diverge. Very good. Why? This is guessing. I rolled the dice. You are correct. I'll give you one point for that. Why? Um, Wait, die, isn't it? Friend. You <laughs> rolled diverge. Because you're somebody. Yeah. The limit. No. no. Wait. The nth I term test converge. for divergence. What? I thought she said. <laughs> <laughs> take the limit of it. We learned this last time. Okay, here. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to our last class, n equal 1 to infinity. This, remember I told you, this is the very first thing you should look for. Okay, what if you had n over n? No, 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 sorry. Uh, silence. Wait, is this friend? Silence! I don't want to make a mistake, that's why. <laughs> e to the negative 1. Okay, very good. If you take the oh. limit of that oh. as a sequence, the only prayer it has, it has of converging is if that goes to zero. Does it? No. What's the limit of this thing? What's the limit no. as it approaches no. infinity of n over n plus 1 to the n? I told e. you guys to memorize that. 1 over e. Is that equal to zero? No. No. So therefore, automatic diverge. This is called the n term test for divergence. If this thing as a sequence does not go to zero, automatic diverge. Yes. Okay? If it does go to zero, 
then it <laughs> might convert, so you gotta do this other test. Yes. You guys understand? Yes. If it goes to any other number besides zero, diverge. Okay, so let's do this one. one. What is the limit as n approaches infinity of n times sine of one over n? Hirano said one, how do you know that's correct? Right. Very good. This is the infinity times zero indeterminate case, so you guys know what to do. And n in <laughs> and n in the numerator is like a so one over. Yes, you could <laughs> use Lopatow. <laughs> Lopatow. It's uh, sine box over box. box. <laughs> and is the as n approaches infinity, is the box going to zero? Yeah. This is friend. It's one. Is that any number besides zero? Yeah. yeah. So it diverges by the n term test. That's what we call it. Oh, if it's zero. So the, that's the very, anytime you're looking for convergence or divergence, that's the very first thing you look for. Does this thing go to zero? If it doesn't, automatic diverge. Does everybody understand? What? And then if it does go to zero, then you gotta look at the other test. What test should I use here? Do the comparison? Should I do the integral test, the ratio test? Which one do you recommend? Did, did you limit comparison. You can do limit comparison. That, to me, that's the easiest one. <laughs> Okay, we gotta keep moving on. Oh, wait, when did, we only got five minutes left in this class. Can we do 17? Okay, let's skip to 17. Okay, what? Are you sure? Yeah. Wait, we have a class after this? Yeah. Yes. Wait, what? We have we have tests. Okay, let me just do 15. I'm, just, I'm not gonna do 15, but I'm just gonna. I didn't know we had a class after this. Okay, look at this thing. Why? Converge or diverge? The next person that says yes, I'm going to take off one for real. <laughs> Let's see if anybody says it now. One. Roll, roll the dice, one. Very good. Okay, why? Okay, what are you gonna what are we gonna compare it with? One over n to the three. Very good. See? One for it. Got it. Why? Yeah, one! Take, <laughs> take away the take away that plus one. Take away that plus one. Isn't that one over the yeah. That's a P series. It's greater than one. It converges. So limit comparison or direct comparison? Limit. You always do limit. Direct. Okay, if you are going to use the direct comparison test, ah, you, can. you have to show that the terms of this series are less than or equal to the terms of this series. It's going to be bigger than and one. can you say that? Two. Oh. Yes, because if you oh. add one to the denominator, it makes it smaller. So yes, you can say direct comparison test. What about limit comparison test? Well, how about the numerator? Yeah. That the numerator over the n squared that's the the one over n over n. Just take away the plus one. n to the half over n to the two is n to the three halves. In the denominator. Just take away the plus one. Okay, number 17. You can take away the plus one. There's no games today, people. That's how you gotta find out which one you guys are. That's all. So, you guys come to class because maybe you can play a game. Yeah. Okay, here, let me let me call on some joy. Roll the dice. Uh, <laughs> you roll the dice and you. What, what do you call it when you. Snake, snake eye. Yeah, no. Snake you know when you play crap and then you roll crap seven when you're not supposed to? Crap. I, I, think it, I think it's called you crapped out. No, yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so obviously it converges. What's the reason, Kanashiro? Okay, I'm going to give you a hint, Kanashiro. Okay, okay, somebody said geometric. That's it. you got to recognize geometric. I hate these glasses. <laughs> Lift and separate. Lift and separate, go. What is this over this?